What happened to Todd Gurley? Todd Gurley's career is often referenced by its abrupt ending. Well, the Rams tried to trade Todd Gurley, the former face of the franchise. The Rams have released the former face of their franchise and Todd Gurley. Now he's off to Atlanta to become a Falcon. You, you said there's no doubt, so you're done, right? You're not coming back. Oh, right. yeah, Mo most definitely. All right, 28 years old, Todd. It was a great career. It's true his career ended quickly but I contend his career should not be defined by how it ended. Instead, it should be defined by the heights reached during such a short span of time and how unlikely his stardom truly was. Todd Gurley was on pace for a Hall of Fame career prior to his injuries, but not everyone gets to live out a storybook ending, and the media tends to pick and choose how a player is remembered. Luckily, these days, we can all create articles and videos to correct these narratives. In a few seasons, Gurley was able to showcase amazing ability and find financial success before his knees let him down. We find out he has a degenerative knee, an arthritic knee, and it's the same knee that he tore the ACL in at University of Georgia. So therefore, this is a condition that is gonna be monitored the rest of his career. My aims in this video are to walk you through Todd Gurley's unlikely rise, reframe a successful NFL career, and make a case for Todd Gurley to be remembered properly as the dominant running back he was on the field, and possibly, just maybe, convince you that he is a Hall of Fame player. What did you say? Welcome back to Unlikely Success, where I focus on attributes of success through covering celebrities, athletes, and finding stories to learn from. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe and comment to support the channel. Now let's get into Todd Gurley's insane climb to the best running back in football and the quick exit that followed, which now taints how his career is viewed. Before we get into his professional accomplishments, we must first quickly look at Todd's time in college to understand exactly how his NFL career came about. Playing his college ball at the University of Georgia, Gurley would provide instant impact for the Bulldogs. By opening his freshman season with a kickoff return for a touchdown, he put the entire college football world on notice. With standout performances against Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi, Auburn, and Alabama, the entire SEC was now aware of who this freshman was. He became only the second true freshman in Georgia school history to rush for over 1,000 yards. It was a freshman season that would see him have 1,502 scrimmage yards, 17 touchdowns, including nine games of over 100 yards, and he would earn first-team All-SEC honors. His ability to hurdle defenders, an ability largely due to his track talents, and a style that combined power with grace and agility made him stand out in every highlight he was seen in. His sophomore campaign would be nearly as impressive as his freshman one, starting with two dominant games against Clemson and South Carolina. It was a season where he racked up 1,430 scrimmage yards and 16 touchdowns, but it would also see him sidelined with a high ankle injury. If this were a comic book, you could consider this his origin story of the injury-prone label that would follow him his entire career. Gurley's junior year would once again see an incredible start as he would open the season with 198 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, and a kick return for a touchdown against Clemson. In three of his next four games, he would eclipse 100 yards and score five more touchdowns until on October 9th, University of Georgia star running back Todd Gurley has been suspended indefinitely while the school investigates an alleged violation of NCAA rules. Ultimately, the suspension would be for four games due to an NCAA investigation determining he had received $3,000 or more for signed autographs and memorabilia. Upon his return to the field against Auburn on November 15th, Gurley would rush for 138 yards, but this unfortunately would end his season as he tore his ACL. The injury comes at such an unfortunate time for Todd Gurley. An MRI confirmed he won't play the rest of the season with a torn ACL. He had just returned to the team after sitting out four games for profiting off his name by taking benefits for signing autographs. After his junior season, Todd Gurley would enter the 2015 NFL Draft. Due to his ACL injury, he was only able to participate in one drill at the Combine, the bench press, where he would do 17 reps and many teams would be impressed by his willingness to participate. But there were still large gaps in his draft position, according to many experts. And there were still major concerns about his injury history. Fortunately, my beloved Rams would select Todd Gurley, 10th overall in the 2015 draft. With the 10th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the St. Louis Rams select Todd Gurley, running back, Georgia. The then St. Louis Rams were building a strong young core, but they were also coached by Jeff Fisher. So they finished 7-9 in 2015. 
For his part, Todd had 1,106 rushing yards, 188 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. He won the Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he only missed two games after a 10-month ACL recovery. He would again draw comparisons to other great NFL running backs. This time, it was Adrian Peterson. When Peterson himself was asked about Gurley, he would say this. Reminds me, you know, a lot of myself. You know, um, he's a strong guy. He runs fast, physical, great feet. Um, he has great vision, nice balance. Um, and this is determination that he runs with. Um, you don't see a lot of running backs that, that run that way. Did Todd Gurley remind you of Adrian Peterson? Or was there another great running back that he reminded you of? For me, it was usually Marshawn Lynch. In 2016, frustration would boil over as Jeff Fisher was fired for performance after three blowout losses and a 4-9 and nine record. Confusingly, this firing happened after the Rams had extended Jeff Fisher's contract to run through their relocation to LA and the new stadium that was being built. It was a disappointing sophomore campaign in the NFL, finishing with a 4-12 record, 885 rushing yards, 327 receiving yards, and six touchdowns. It was clearly not the way that Todd Gurley had seen his second season in the NFL playing out. Luckily for him, the Rams would make an excellent choice as their next head coach, Sean McVay. McVay was the youngest NFL coach ever at 30 years old, and he brought an immediate upgrade to the Rams offense. McVay would bring in his version of the zone running offense, an offense where offensive linemen step in unison to create running lanes for backs who then choose the lane and get up field quickly. The zone running scheme has long been known to be favorable to running backs, gaining NFL popularity with Mike Shanahan's Super Bowl wins with the Denver Broncos. McVay's system varied in that he used the screen game as an added element to get the ball into his running back's hands. The team now had a flashy young coach, new home in LA, and a young roster full of talent waiting to break out. The biggest star amongst that talented team was their 23-year-old running back. In 2017, Todd Gurley was unquestionably the best running back in football. The team flourished under their new coach, becoming the number one offense in the NFL. In 12 of the 15 games that Gurley played in, he would surpass 100 scrimmage yards, including two games where he went over 200 against the Cowboys and the Titans, respectively. It was a Rams offense that was humming, going from the worst offense in 2016 to the best offense in 2017. They were scoring 19 more points per game than the prior year. They were led by their star running back, who finished second in the MVP voting and won Offensive Player of the Year. He rushed for 1,305 yards and 13 touchdowns, while adding 788 yards receiving and six more touchdowns. 2017 was a breakout year for the Rams and Gurley. Todd Gurley is 38% of their offense. Mm. That's the highest total since Adrian Peterson mm. in 2012. What did Adrian Peterson do in 2012, Joe? He won the MVP. Mm. Oh. Mm. His explosive playing style fit perfectly with the recently relocated Rams, who had been looking to make a splashy return to LA. Gurley was now a solidified star, and as a reward for his stardom, the Rams signed him to a lucrative four-year, $57.5 million extension with $45 million in guarantees. Todd Gurley is a difference maker, and so I think he deserves to get paid. More to come on this later. 2018 would only add to TG3's statistical dominance, as he would rush for 1,251 yards and 17 touchdowns, while adding 580 receiving yards and four touchdowns. But it would raise the most impactful question of his professional career. What is going on with that name? You see, he had sat the last two regular season games with knee inflammation and concerns were growing over the star tailback's health. In the divisional round of the playoffs, Gurley would return in a 115-yard, one-touchdown performance that eased doubts about his health temporarily. These doubts would almost immediately return as he only rushed for four times in the NFC Championship game against the Saints, a game best known for Saints fans who constantly complain over the non-call. The Super Bowl media coverage would focus heavily on the status of Todd Gurley's knee. Is he healthy? Yeah, all the way. He's all the way healthy. Yeah, what makes you think he's not healthy? There are just reports that say that his knee is constantly swollen. Like, that's what the reports say. I don't know. I haven't seen his knee up close. His so... knee is definitely not swollen. Okay. I remember the lead up to this game, and it had been obvious to most of us Rams fans for about two months of the season that Gurley was having some type of trouble with an injury, which we now know was his knee. He would carry the ball 10 times for 35 yards in Super Bowl 53, and the Rams would lose to America's favorite football villains, 13 to three. There was no question that you among many were wondering about one thing that was not going on for the Rams. One guy who spent once again so much of the night on the sideline. What was your perspective on the situation last night with Todd Gurley? 
What is going on? Heading into 2019, there were now very loud concerns surrounding TG3's health. Can somebody, can you tell me what the hell happened with Todd Gurley's knee last year? Sure. And what it bodes for 2019, Andrew Sicilio? Absolutely. I, I can tell you what I know, and I, I don't think people are lying to me. There is no super secret story here. They're, they're not hiding anything from the world. It was a primary focus for the team and anyone interested in football. 2019 was a lackluster year following what 2017 and 2018 had been. Riddled with concerns over load management, Gurley would post a career low in rushing while still managing 14 touchdowns. The LA cool vibe was wearing off as the Rams missed the playoffs and rumors were growing that the Rams wanted to offload their talented running back. Eventually, the Rams would release Gurley. Two years after he had signed his massive deal, it was a cost-cutting measure, but it felt clearly like the end of a Rams era. They now have officially released Todd Gurley, no longer a member of the Los Angeles Rams. And of course, the same Todd Gurley they took in the first round, had so much success with early on. At one point, it looked like an MVP with the team was basically the engine for their offense and then a troubling knee injury that simply would not go away. A big time storyline leading up to the Super Bowl a couple years back and something that uh, clearly limited him last year in the minds of those with the Rams. Uh, they have now informed him that he is released. Todd Gurley is the newest member of the Atlanta Falcons after being let go by the Los Angeles Rams. The Atlanta Falcons at the time felt like a good fit for Gurley as they had recently released Devontae Freeman, but it only highlighted the limitations of Gurley at this point. He was able to rush for 678 yards and nine touchdowns, adding 164 receiving yards, but both yardage totals were career lows. He also matched his career low in yards per touch and became a meme when he could not stop himself from scoring a touchdown. Following the season, Gurley was not highly sought after by other NFL teams. He would spend 2021 as a free agent and opt to retire in 2022. Todd Gurley should be seen as a star that burned too bright and through no fault of his own declined faster than he expected. His career should be remembered for its peak and the dominance displayed, not the quick ending. Over a four year span, Gurley won Rookie of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, and was a three-time All-Pro. For two of those years, his head coach was Jeff Fisher, how much can one man overcome? If you consider his full six-year career, his 8,000-plus scrimmage yards are slightly lower than Terrell Davis's, but his 79 touchdowns are 14 higher. I'm not saying Gurley will be voted into the Hall of Fame, but I am saying it's a discussion. He helped lead the Rams out of mediocrity, played a vital role in the immediate success of Sean McVay's offense. He did not win a Super Bowl, but very few careers are truly perfect. Todd Gurley's career was a definitive success, and I'll be hoping he sneaks into the Hall of Fame. Even if he doesn't, he'll remain one of my favorite NFL running backs of all time. This has been The Unlikely Success. Todd Gurley is the engine that really runs that Ram offense, and it's just, I, I'll, I'm just baffled to see just how underutilized Todd Gurley was, and, and I'm curious to see what this, how this whole thing is going to play out as far as the injury is concerned.